Hello people out there in YouTube world. I'm Tony, this is Isfi Tepecha, and as you may have heard me say before, we're building a cruising sailboat. And we're gonna start here in the cockpit area because something happened this week is that I finally got these rails, this sort of horizontal rails, in place between the aft bimini pole and, uh, and the forward stanchion there in the cockpit area. Uh, Good and solid, nice and strong. It allowed me to chuck a small tarp over the bimini and just enclose the cockpit a bit. Get it uh, a bit protected. And that was where we started. So we're at the very bow end here and um, I thought I'd say a few words about the keel structure because this is mainly what we're working on at the moment. And something I said last week may have been a little misleading, possibly even wrong. Um, so we've got, the, the boat has a, a degree of rocker to it and a bit of curve fore and aft at the bottom line. And so um, full length keel coming in and uh, the goal at the moment is to fit these shaped pieces that will eventually give us a, a flat line, a level line fore and aft that the rest of the keel will fit to. So, so I'm shaping up these wedge shaped pieces. There'll be a third one under here that will bring us down to the lowest point of, of the uh, midships there. So we can get that flat line through there. And obviously the same thing aft. Now, the keel doesn't extend all the way to the aft end. It stops forward of where the sail drive leg comes through. So there's less uh, curve required there or less of these wedge shaped pieces required to flatten it out. Um, but that's, that's the goal at the moment. Get these wedge shaped pieces in. So I've got this flat line running all the way through underneath. The rest of the keel will then obviously be flat on the top to fit to that. And I shall make that up in the in the boat shed uh, separately. So we've got the wooden structure that comes below this, and then the ballast keel, obviously, on that or underneath that. The ballast keel bolts up through the whole thing, up through the floor timbers inside the boat, and holds the whole thing up together. You know, good and good and solid. Um, and that's how it's going to go. That's how I'm going to build it. So I should build. Just get this bit flattened out, as I said, through here on the boat. And then in the boat shed, I'll make the rest of the keel structure. When we transport her up to the yard, in the yard, they can lift her up on a crane and then lower her down onto the rest of the keel structure. That is the plan. I've just put in a big order for, for Douglas fir for the keel structure, for the wood keel structure. Uh, that should be coming any day. And obviously the ballast keel to make, which should be rather exciting.
it's raining I hope it doesn't disturb you too much um, I thought I'd say a couple of quick words about the material I'm using for the uh, first sections of the of the wood keel um, and in fact that is a couple of boards that I salvaged from the from the remnants of the strong back that I took off last week so um, there's something I've tried to do in this build I've tried to use uh, when materials were needed for something outside of the boat such as the lofting boards and the, the strong back I've made them out of materials that I could use later in the build so I made the strong back out of dug fur um, and as you saw so I took the very last part of the strong back off of the boat or away from the boat last week and now I've got a couple of good dug fur boards for the first parts of the kill and the technique I've got this ball here look and as you can see there's this angle coming on there mark it out obviously and I've just roughed it out on the table saw it doesn't really matter where you cut it as long as it's waste side of the wood um, and then you finish it off with a planer and the technique then is to plane down at an angle down to the line all along both sides and that then gives you a very very clear guide to plane the middle down to down to flat and the right angle that you want
in position there, honey. Mm -hmm. Get some screws out. You ready? You say when? Right there. Yeah. Right there. It's easy. Okay? Yep. Here we go. Then. That's good. You still. And one other thing that, that clearly is required is that in order to get this whole thing to, to fit, it's most important that it lines up in the right place. So I thought now is the time to, uh, to drill the holes through the floors so that I can mark it onto this separate part that I'll be building in the, in the boat shed so that everything will indeed line up when it's time to put it together. So one at station four, one there, one there. We're going to put a double in the next one back. It should be this one here. This one here. We're putting two in here. Quite spicy yeah. and comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like the light from yeah. there and from there. Yeah. Because everything's light. Everything's light. Yeah. Good to see both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Can't fall out because. No. Exactly. That's walk. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. So what's the technique there, Hazel? Uh, hold your finger. In a space so that it's level. 
That's about right. So that's the guide for the drilling. Oh, yes. Drill a hole so it's in the right spot and upright. Not one. Good that way. Can't deny that this isn't the most accurate way of doing it, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Just a quick look this way. Um, just go up that way a little bit. So I've, I've deviated a bit from the designer's plans when it comes to the kill bolt arrangement. Um, according to the plans, there's one kill bolt on each floor down the way, and I wasn't wild about that. So I've, I've gone for one at the front. The ballast kill slopes up at the front, so um, there's less mass there at the front end. 
and there where the bulk of the mass is I've gone for two side by side. Um, all holes are drilled oversized so uh, the very front bolt that I'm kneeling upon is a half inch diameter bolt. I've drilled that out to 16 millimeters. All the other ones are five eighths of an inch and I've drilled those out to 20 millimeters. So there's a bit of play on all of them. And the idea is what all of these builders do is that when it's in place, pour some wet epoxy down the holes, seals the wood obviously, seals the whole thing thoroughly and uh, makes the bolts fit the holes. So one little difference is, is those wedge shaped pieces for the keel um, forward, they've got a, a straight slope on them, a straight angle, the, the bow of the boat as it, the rocker at the front is, is very straight. So it's very easy to cut those. At the aft end, it's much more curvaceous and, and uh, have to play in a concave curve into the piece for, for fitting there. Um, so. With the straight edge, you can see the degree of curvature by just you know rocking it and measuring fore and aft. Mark that out on the wood um, just by measuring it in the midpoint and marking that degree of curve with straight lines and then eye the curve from that is accurate enough. And uh, luckily enough, didn't need any fancy planes or anything. It's a, it's a gentle enough curve that I could, could plane it just with a standard plane. The aft end of that piece where it comes down to the sail drive tapers down to a to a thickness of an inch and a half or so um, to allow water flow you know, cleanly to the sail drive leg.
And that's where we're leaving it for this week. Um, she'll be pushing on with the keel structure this week coming. Get the last, I've got one more piece underneath the fit for the leveling out. And then uh, start making up the, the timber keel structure, which you'd hope would go fairly quickly. It's fairly straightforward. Um, and there we are. Massive thank you from me to you for watching and to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and PayPal. We'll be back next time. See you then. Bye. Thank you.